Is there any programming language out there that is more polarizing than JavaScript? It seems like everyone that I talk to about JavaScript either loves it or hates it. Typically, the people who love it are web developers, and it makes sense, they're probably using it more than anyone else. And it is true that JavaScript revolutionized the web because before JavaScript, most websites just looked like this. They were very minimal, uh, they were text-based, and this is perfectly fine for what it is. This is HexDSL's personal website. So it has links to his RSS here, and there's different blog posts that he's made down here. And there is a little bit of a highlight effect that you can see whenever I hover over links. Uh, so they get the magenta background and it actually fades. I, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's fading from blue to black. It's not immediately transitioning. So it is a little bit fancy as far as a text-based website goes. But what if I told you it's possible to make animations and other things that you would normally use JavaScript for, but you can do it entirely in CSS and HTML. Today, I'm gonna to show you some examples of that. So here's an example of a very detailed background with animated uh, birds that are flying past. So this looks very minimal um, or very simple. And it kind of is compared to some of the other things we're gonna take a look at. So this is the CSS and HTML here. I had to enable JavaScript just because I'm on CodePen and it requires JavaScript to actually show you the code. But you can see here, this is the JS being used in here, which is none. So as far as our CSS goes, we've got about 180 lines and then we've got just under two dozen lines uh, for the HTML. Uh, so yeah, I can turn this back off. So now we're blocking JavaScript on this tab and yeah, this is gonna yell at us. But as you can see, the animation is still working the same way. And you can also resize it to fit on a mobile device. And then it moves uh, this text for you so that it doesn't get cut off on a phone. So that's pretty cool. Here's another example of an animated background. So again, no JavaScript is uh, being used for this. It's just CSS, HTML, and even less codes, uh, 65 lines of CSS, and then about 80 lines of HTML. Um, just really simple snowfall. Like this is a pretty pleasant background that you could use on a site or maybe at a, at a header because um, let's see how big this actually is. Yeah, so this is more meant to be like a header. Um, but yeah, it doesn't require any JavaScript at all to do something like this. So maybe you're not really impressed by this stuff. Maybe you wanna see something uh, that's a little bit more complicated, something that you would really think you would need JavaScript to do. So here's an example um, of basically like a, a website or maybe a little portfolio that you could do. Um, I, I think this would be something that maybe a photographer would set up. Um, no JavaScript, so let's see, am I already blocking? Yeah, so JavaScript is being blocked on this page and you get like sort of this little highlight um, whenever you hover over it and it's a fade in, so it's not immediately switching to the highlighted version and you just click on it and then uh, another picture shows up. So really cool. And then yeah, it's displaying this text that sort of drops out from the middle. Like yeah, this is something that just looking at it, you would think JavaScript is running, but there's no JavaScript at all. And we can take a look at this to see. So there's um, you know, quite a bit that's going on here. And then if we go into the style editor, there is a whole lot of CSS that's necessary uh, to make something like this. But again, it's possible. You don't have to use uh, JavaScript to do something like this. Here's a more practical example. So this is a bunch of different uh, hover effects. So this is something that I've seen a lot on different websites. Um, I, I think it's probably more common on e-commerce websites, like not really general ones, but like if you go to, um, I can't remember the exact one, but it was just like a wine website that I was looking at. And um, when it, you would hover over one of the bottles, all this text would pop up telling you about like the vineyard that the grapes were gotten from and stuff like that. Uh, and that site, of course, used JavaScript, but this one, not using any. So that's one example. And then 
we can see others with different animations and different colors. Uh, yeah, like that one rolls in from the right hand side. Uh, that one sort of like zooms out and then flips in. Uh, it's basically all of those different animation styles that you would see in like a PowerPoint program. But yeah, this, this is really cool stuff. It doesn't require any JavaScript to do anything like this. Uh, and of course, this is something that you could just build into uh, your website, right? Like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, people, other people have already done this. It, it might be a little trickier to get it from a site like this. So you might want to, you know, use something like CodePen where you can just view the code um, <laughs> if I enable JavaScript, where you could just view the code and then copy it into your project. So there's some pretty practical examples. Uh, let's take a look at something uh, where people are really just showing off. So this is an animation of Carlton. Uh, and there is some JavaScript over here on the side, but this is actually just for the music toggle on and off. I actually don't wanna play any of the music because I don't know if it's copyright or anything like that. So I'm going to delete this JavaScript. Um, and then this should, yeah, once it reloads, so you see the animation is still going. And then like this doesn't work at all. It's gonna give an error here. But yeah, you see Carlton just dancing. And um, this is much more involved. So like you can see all of this stuff here. I, I'm, I really don't know a lot about front end development. So I'm not even gonna begin to uh, pretend like I know what's going on, but I know we got Carlton here dancing and we don't need any JavaScript to do it. Here, let's even uh, disable it, right? So yeah, CodePen's gonna yell at us, but Carlton is still here getting his groove on. Uh, and then this is probably the craziest example that's on CodePen. So this is like an entire solar system explorer that's just CSS and HTML, uh, no JavaScript. So yeah, like we're on Pluto here and then we can read more about Pluto. I don't know why it's included uh, since it's not a planet, but uh, whatever. This is obviously someone that really loves Pluto. Yeah, we can go to Neptune. Um, I don't think you can click on any of the moons. Yeah, and um, oh, it's not giving more info for Pluto or it's not giving more info for that. Um, maybe it doesn't give any for the rest of the planets, but you get the picture. Like this is maybe not as functional as some of those other like planets or solar system exploration websites, but it's pretty darn functional for not having any JavaScript. Um, kind of difficult to do this. Like, yeah, you have to write over a thousand lines of CSS and then probably a few hundred H, yeah, several hundred HTML to do it, but it is possible. And I don't know, I'm just really impressed by this. Like it's really clever when somebody can do something like this. Now you might be wondering what is the point of all of this beyond just showing off? Uh, you can obviously build these types of apps 10 times faster or more when using JavaScript, but some people have very valid privacy and security concerns around running JavaScript. So not all JavaScript out there is bad. I want to make that clear, but a lot of the JavaScript that is running on the internet is used to track users' activity. Uh, this is why you'll see privacy add-ons like uBlock Origin give you an option to completely disable JavaScript on all websites or on the current website that you have loaded in your tab. And also like privacy browsers, like if we look at the Tor browser, it's safest setting disables JavaScript on all websites. GNU IceCat, which is probably considered the best browser for privacy that doesn't automatically connect to a mixnet. Uh, that has JavaScript disabled. Same thing with LibreWolf, which is also considered a really good browser for privacy. Uh, I think on its safest setting, it also has uh, JavaScript disabled. Now, even if you don't purposefully implement malicious JavaScript on your website to try and spy on your users, some people might still refuse to run it depending on the framework. So let's say if you're using Angular or React, those are both designed, well, those are designed by Google and Facebook respectively. So people might boycott your site for using a framework that's made by an evil company. But even still, even if you're writing pure frameworkless JavaScript with no malicious intents, 
you can still be exposing your web app to hackers if you write the JavaScript incorrectly. Uh, so this might, they might be able to gain access to your website through buggy JavaScript and then uh, leak your customer data, or they could perform cross-site scripting attacks on your site to steal people's logins. Cross-site scripting is one of the most common vulnerabilities that are out there on the web. But if you don't, you know, you don't open yourself up to these problems if you stick with pure HTML and CSS. So just something to consider. I know that there's tons of web apps out there and that, that they couldn't be possible without using JavaScript. But the next time that you're writing, especially a fairly simple web app, ask yourself, do I really need to rely on JavaScript for this or can I be clever and just do things with HTML and CSS?